Welcome to this Innova Systems web circuit on SOLIDWORKS Task Scheduler. The Task Scheduler can be found underneath the SOLIDWORKS folder in your Start menu uh, in SOLIDWORKS Tools. The Task Scheduler is used to perform a number of uh, repetitive tasks uh, so that the engineer doesn't have to sit there and do them all himself. So I'm just going to quickly run through the list to explain what each one does. Convert Files, the first one, takes SOLIDWORKS files from, say, 2011 and converts them to SOLIDWORKS 2012, for example. Dissect files goes through uh, files and takes out all of the different features within the file so they can be used as uh, temporary library features. Update files essentially uh, opens the file and does Control Q rebuild um, to completely rebuild the file. Update associated files very similar, but what you do is you select a, a sort of a top level assembly, for want of a better term, um, and then you say right update all the files uh, in this top level assembly, all the reference files so that you have the whole assemblies rebuilt. Print files, fairly self-explanatory, goes through a folder or a list of files and prints them off. Import files, what it does is it will open up a, uh, a folder that contains a number of step files and it will import all of the step files in one go to create SOLIDWORKS files from them. Export files does the same in reverse, you give it a number of SOLIDWORKS files and it turns them into uh, a number of export file types. Update custom properties, uh, opens up the file uh, and then we'll go through either assigning custom properties that don't exist or changing the values of custom properties that do exist. Create drawings, or open up parts and assemblies and it creates drawings from them. Convert to high quality views, you have the option when you're doing a drawing to save a view as a, a draft quality view. Convert to high quality views basically does the conversion from the draft quality to the high quality. Quite useful if you're using very large assemblies where you might want draft quality views to save yourself time when you're doing the edit, but you want to print it out at high quality. Run custom task. If you have uh, any programs um, that you have had designed for you or any macros that you use on a regular basis, then run custom task basically runs that macro on a number of files. Create e-drawings. This does the process of the publish e-drawings button. Again, you can do this on a folder or a list of files. Update simulation. Does sort of what it says. If you've changed the models, you can then ask it to rerun all the simulations in order to bring the results up to date. Design Checker uh, allows you to run any Design Checker standard files you uh, have got saved and run those on a number of files. You can also choose to autocorrect any mistakes it finds from the list of autocorrectable errors. Render and animation. Now this is slightly different to the rest. You can't create a render schedule, but what that button does is if you have decided to schedule the renders you've already got lined up or the animations you've got lined up, then once you've got them lined up, you can use that button in order to adjust the schedules, for example. So if you said start at 5 and you think, oh no, I need to start it at 6, that's the button you come to do. The last three are all related to workgroup PDM. And what they do is they do the same as the standard set. So convert workgroup PDM is the same as convert files. Print workgroup PDM is the same as print files. And export workgroup PDM is the same as export files. But those three all allow and, and require you to log into a vault first. So it allows you to pick things out of a, a workgroup PDM vault and then run the tasks on them. Now I'm just going to have a quick look in a couple of them just to show you what they look like. So if we choose, as an example, update associated files. You can give it a task title, so if you've got a number of tasks that are going to be running, you can identify them nice and quickly. Um, this one then asks for a file path name, so if I browse on this and we choose a drawing, for example, and then I'm going to choose open, it lists the seed file path. Um, we can then choose the task schedule, so are we going to be running it once, are we going to be running daily, weekly, monthly, um, what time is it going to start and what date is it going to start. Please be aware your computer obviously needs to be on in order for the task to run on the schedule. Um, the task schedule itself doesn't need to be open, but the computer needs to be running. If the computer's not running at the start time and date, then what happens is the task just kicks off as soon as you turn your machine on. The same as if I set this back into the, into the past, it will start straight away. Um, under the advanced button you get to choose what the working folder is for the task so when if it needs to create any temporary files and so on that's the folder it will create them in also how long to wait before it times out in seconds and whether you're going to uh, run minimize so most of these tasks involve SOLIDWORKS starting up in some way um, and we'll see that in a little bit and you can choose run minimize to say don't pop it up in front of everything else now for a lot of tasks, once you've filled in the first page, that's done, you just hit finish. This one's got a next because 
uh, and some of the others do as well because it's asking for additional information. So in this case, this one's asking for which folders is it going to look in for the reference documents. If we're going to have a look at custom properties for another example of that, you can choose to add a folder or a file. And whenever you've got this choice, you can either have a list of files or you can have a list of folders, but you can't have a list which contains both files and folders. So if I choose uh, a folder here, oh, it'll help if I click on the right one. Um, you can then see that's listed there. And again, next, you now can choose the name of the custom property you're going to add or modify, uh, what type of property it is, what value it is, and what configurations you want to apply that to. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a print files task. Um, so I'm going to add a folder. Um, as an aside, if you've got a list of items here and you want to delete one of them, you select the number that it's on and then hit the delete key uh, and that removes the line out. Now I'm going to want this to run straight away. The print task also has an options and that is because it's going to say which printer do you want to select uh, and any other print details you want to set up. Now I'm just going to hit finish. Now what it's going to do is go away ready the uh, the schedule and then when it uh, realizes the time has passed it will then start the amount of time before the schedule actually kicks in depends now this one's already started off we've got a SolidWorks window in the background and this is my PDF writer that's just popping up this window asking me to save each PDF as I go along we wait a little bit longer so the task schedule can see that it's finished the task and then we will have a look at what is generated. Now, if you've got a much bigger task, you might find that this happens first, but with only a small task, only had six files to print, we get this afterwards. So there we go, it's completed. And if I expand that, you can see it says it's completed and generated subtasks. The subtasks is because I've got six individual files in my folder. So it lists all of the files individually, what date it started them on, what time it started them on, did all of these pretty quickly, and that it's gone through. Now up at the top we can choose to refresh the list so that if we're part way through a task we can see which ones are completed and which one it's working on. If you choose to copy a task it's basically say here's a task I've done before, I want to do the same thing again. It's just a nice quick way to set it up. Delete task does what it says, print is to print the list. And then if we come and have a look at the task we can see when tasks are going to happen. So tasks that are happening today, tasks that are happening in the future, tasks that are happening in the past, tasks that have been finished tasks that are scheduled and haven't started and then everything and if I click on everything we can see at the top here there's a convert workgroup PDM files task this was to update a whole load of workgroup files to 2012 and you can see this is finished previously and they had 803 files in it and if I expand this I'm just going to show you some other um, warnings so completed good news completed with warning it's telling me that something has happened but it's successfully completed the file anyway uh, but always worth checking uh, there's a failed one there. If we keep going down, we can see the list of files. So this would have been done over a, over a period of time as it generates the, generates the uh, subtasks and then goes off and carries on doing the files. So that's a brief introduction to uh, Task Scheduler. Thank you very much for watching.